call the Jackie Town Zoning Hearing Board uh, back into session. Uh, Mr. Yana, welcome. Mr. Thank you. Uh, we're going to ask everybody to reach into their pockets, turn off their cell phones, turn off the uh, anything that's going to distract our hearing. We're going to ask each of you this evening to be respectful to each of the witnesses and respectful to each of the attorneys um, as we're going forward so that we can move through this as quickly as possible. Uh, and with that, uh, with the lawyer, would you uh, if I may, get us going? Yeah, and, and just uh, to piggyback off of what Mr. Hudson just said, I want everyone to understand what this body is. This is a quasi-judicial body, the zoning hearing. That means that the way that everyone in this uh, room should act during this hearing is as if you're in front of a judge in Norristown. So um, a couple of things that happened that I wanted to point out and I would ask that they stop is some of the facial expressions towards the witnesses. Um, any outbursts at all uh, will not be tolerated, just like in the courtroom they would not be tolerated. I understand completely, I think everyone in this room does, um, that there, there's some tension around this case. I think everyone in this room, though, is also a Jenkintonian, or at least works here. And, uh, and many of us have, have grown up here or lived here for a long time, so you know what it means to be a Jenkintonian. It means that we are a different kind of person. We are respectful in this town. We treat, treat each other with dignity. And that's how this hearing is going to be run. So there was a few moments during the last hearing uh, that won't be tolerated during this hearing. With that, um, Mr. Yanoff, or Mr. Hitchens, I believe that where we're at, Mr. Yanoff, Mr. Hitchens, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we are going to have board members question Mr. Locke, uh, and then we're going to move on with the Burroughs case, correct? That's, that's my understanding, yes. Mr. Marler, I have just a housekeeping issue. With the, at the last hearing, I indicated that I did not have sufficient copies of my office's letter to Mr. Kilkenny dated January 9th. Uh, I have the original that I marked, so I can make copies of it. I'd like to hand that up, but I also have copies. I, I think you probably have seen this, but I indicated it was marked as applicants one at the last hearing, and I just want to make sure that uh, we close the door on that issue. Thank you. Thank you. If I can just get my, my bearings. I believe, Mr. Yanoff, just to clarify, did you, did you, when was that presented? Was that in a packet or was it put, was it there? No, it was a separate letter. Okay. It, it, in, it came in the, um, in the portion of Mr. Locke's testimony about uh, responses to the notice violation. So it was used as, as in cross examination. Right. Okay, understood. Understood. So we're marking this as what? So I believe you're going to mark, Applicant mark it. One as African one uh, at a later time? I, I think we marked it then, but but we can mark it any time you want to, but it, it would be applicant one. Understood, understood, thank you. And with that, are there any questions, Mr. Majority, are you ready? Okay. okay, great. Are there any questions of the board of Mr. Locke? We'll jump on this up. Scott, do you have any questions of Mr. Locke for his testimony? Yes, uh, at one point, you said that um, you had a meeting and you, you were hoping it was, the point of the meeting was trying to see if you could work out something about the zoning problem. And you said that all you would have needed was a letter. From whom would that letter have been? From the Downs, it was from the people that the letter was addressed to. Okay, and did you think they would bring the letter with them or were you hoping they could then go home and write this letter? Uh, it gave them 30, it was 30 days to uh, reply. And, uh, I didn't think they would bring the letter with them, no. No. Um, in the memorandum B11, it says, I con down at the bottom, the second from the bottom, I contacted the complainants and informed them the findings of my three inspections. It says they accepted my findings but then they adamantly disagreed that there was a business. That was a complaint that I just. <coughs> it's on B11, the first page. It's a letter to Borough Council for you. Yes. And it's the next to the bottom bullet 
Yes. I contacted the complainants and informed them of findings of my three inspections. Right, so that would have been the glasses. That would have been the glasses. And, but then, so who adamantly disagreed that there was a business? That's the... The glasses. They didn't agree with my findings. They accepted your findings, but they didn't agree with them. Correct. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm done. I just have two process questions for you, Mr. Law. One, when you get a complaint about a potential zoning violation, is it your normal practice to do a site visit and to examine the conditions um, from the street? Is that your normal practice? The, the complaint can be seen from the street, yes. And is it your normal practice or not that when you do those visits that you make written summaries of what you uh, observe? Uh, not in all cases. Would one, what circumstance would cause you to do it or not do it? Um, if I saw a violation, I would, I would do it. If I didn't see a violation, I normally wouldn't do it. I didn't in this case because of the situation with the two neighbors um, having issues with each other. Thought it would be best to follow up. <coughs> Thank you. No further questions. Uh, Ms. Brennan. Yeah, I believe you said that um, in addition to the, um, the code uh, stipulations for what defines a no impact home business, I believe you also said that based on another recent case, um, you felt that there were other, other considerations in making a determination for whether or not a business had been, was uh, being run, specifically something about materials being, materials coming from or leaving the property. Is that, first of all, is that correct? That's I remember you said, okay. Um, so it's correct then, I can take from that that you felt there were additional factors beyond what's stated in the code that you were considering. That is correct. Okay, thanks. <laughs> that's it? That's all, yes, I'm sorry. No okay. questions. Sorry. Uh, Mr. Lott, um, you went through in uh, 2016 and <coughs> upon the original complaint from the neighbors and went out and you discussed with them, as we just said, and uh, you said you found nothing, and the complainants adamantly disagreed. They accepted your findings, but they adamantly disagreed. A year later, somewhere in August or September of 2017, <coughs> an additional complaint came in that there was activity that appeared to be commercial usage of the property. At which point, you followed up with Borough Council and you gave them a, a, a rendering of all your findings, which has been presented to us here, I think, in E13. One of our findings, and you said this is what I found in my second review. Now, somewhere in December, you filed your initial file notice to the Downs of a violation, and then a secondary after procedurally there was a problem with that a secondary finding in April 2018 <coughs> that there was a finding. Now. What would you, in your opinion, or in your experience, be uh, a factor that would say there is no longer a violation? How would you make that determination? Um, if I didn't see it, or if I didn't hear about it, okay. receive complaints on it. Okay, so if, if there was a violation, but there was no longer a violation, the evidence would either be that you've gone out to the property again and looked and you no longer find, you no longer see that activity. But, is that right? So if you don't see it, then that violation doesn't exist any further at that point. If, if I don't see it while I'm there, I, can, I still can write a violation based off complaints that are filed. From, that has been from history. Okay, so if, if there was a violation and you gave to somebody, let's call it a cease and desist, you went and said, there's a violation here, stop, and they stop, is the normal process then that you follow up with a complaint, or is the normal process that you, or, or with a violation notice, or is that you just have no further action? 
no further action. That's my offer. Thank you. Mr. McCabe? Oh, no questions. <coughs> um, Is there any follow-up on that? Briefly, yes. Okay. Any particular I, I, think, I think Mr. Hitchens can follow up if he has any follow-up. I actually don't think it's appropriate if I don't have any follow-up because if it's, he's my witness, I call him on direct, he's right to cross. I get redirect. If I don't do redirect, he doesn't get a recross. Therefore, if I have no further questions, I don't believe it's appropriate for any further questions from Mr. Yano. Mr. Yano, I'll let you cross based on the board's questions, but only based on the board's questions. You can't go outside. That's fine. Very good. Thank you. If that's the case, then I would ask the right to redirect off of the recross you're allowing. Yes. Please. Thank you. Um, today I handed up uh, applicants one. You remember that? That's a letter from <coughs> Mr. Friedman in my office. Is that correct? Okay. And that letter is dated January 9, 2018. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And that letter uh, was sent to Mr. Kilkenny on behalf of the solicitor of the borough of Jenkintown. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And you also received another letter, which I will mark as applicant two. I don't know where you're going to hand these. But. I'm going to lodge my objection Mr. on Yano. the record. Uh, I think this is outside the scope of the questioning, but. Where is this going, Mr. Yano? I just wanted to identify that this was a response in response to uh, Ms. Cutler's uh, questioning of him concerning process and Ms. Van Pernodian's question. Concerning process, understood. I just want that to be clear. Okay. This has been marked as applicants two. It's a letter from James N. Gross Esquire uh, to George Locke, dated December 18th, 2017. Okay. Mr. Hitchens, does Mr. Hitchens have a copy? Oh no, I, I thought I gave you one. I'm sorry. I handed up to the board. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's all right. Thank you. Now, this meeting that took place that you were questioned about last time and again this evening, that took place on December 7th, is that right? That is correct. Okay. And then you received a letter from the, the uh, Downs' former attorney, Mr. Gross, and that's the letter that we have marked, that we marked as applicants to, uh, uh, and that's also, this, this letter is addressed to you and it's dated December 18, 2017, is that right? 18, 2017, right. And, and this letter was offered to you specifically in response to the, the notice of violation. Isn't that correct? In fact, it says that, doesn't it? Um, sure, sure. The purpose of this letter is to serve as advice to your office that I will now be representing the uh, Margaret A. and David B. Downs. Um, I'm referring to the first sentence of the second paragraph. This letter is being offered in response to the above reference notice. And that notice is the official notice of zoning code violation of December 7, 2017. Is that correct? Uh, it says that in the, in the identifying line in the letter, isn't that right? Yes. Okay. So the above reference notice is the notice of violation that you or Mr. Kilkenny handed to the Downs at the December 17th meeting. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. December, what did I say? 17th? December 7th, 7th. meeting. Okay. And so this letter is what you would have anticipated receiving in response. It's a response letter to the notice of violation. Is that correct? It's a response to a violation. That is correct. Thank you. No further questions? I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thing. Right. Well, we all have dreams, though. Anyway, I need a better one. Uh, you know what I mean. You were asked about the pro a process question about what is whether it's normal for you to do a site inspection from the street. Is that correct? You were asked that question here this evening. I believe I was. Yes, I think so. Okay. Did you at any time? in this entire course from 2016 to the present, walk up to the Downs residence on Runnymede, knock on the door, and ask to see whether a business was being operated within the four walls of the home. No, sir, I did not. 
So the only thing that you relied upon were these drive-bys, correct? In which you indicate, uh, uh, there is one other thing and I say that, you relied upon the drive-bys, which you indicated in 2016 showed no commercial activity, correct? Correct. And then you also told us that even though it's not noted in your B11 memorandum, that you drove by on several other occasions and did not observe commercial activity. Am I correct? May I reference B11? You certainly may. <coughs> Did you reference, did you make any reference in that V11 memo to drive-bys in 2017? You did not, okay. By the way, did you take any photographs in either 2016 or 2017? I'm going to object. Again, I think this is straying far from what's it's, it's, I'm, I'm trying to develop the process, and I, I just want to find out what his process is. You know, he was asked about the process. You had a lot of time to talk about these specific actions. I'm going to sustain the objection. Is actually next question. Next question. The other thing that you relied upon were the complaints and the pictures that were sent to you by the complainant. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Did you rely on photos that you may have taken? No, I did not. And is that because you didn't take it? Objection. Ms. I'm going to sustain the objection. Keep, keep, keep it within the confines of what was asked this evening. Okay. You were also asked this evening about other factors in, uh, involved in the determination of whether there was no, uh, no impact business. Do you recall that question this evening? I'm going to object. That was outside the scope of the questions by the board. The question specifically was, and I wrote it down, <coughs> what, other, what other considerations did you, consi did you consider? <coughs> That's not exactly correct. But what other considerations did you consider with respect to the no impact? That very was the question. Limited, Mr. Yeager. I'm not going very far. Okay. I just want to find Please out. don't. I will. What other considerations were there? What other considerations were there? To determine whether there was a no impact. You know, let's make it easy for you. I'll withdraw that question. The specific example that was cited by the member of the Zoning Hearing Board was materials coming to and leaving the property. That was the specific question. That's a consideration for a no impact business, right? Yes, that is. Okay. What other considerations were would there be? I'm going to object. I think it's outside the scope. Mr. Danoff stated what the exact question was, what the exact answer was. He's confirmed the exact same thing. No, that's not true. Mr. Yale, I think it was also <laughs> There was, Mr. Yale, I'm going to sustain the objection. Let's keep it in the I just want to respond for the record. The question was specifically asked by the zoning board, member, zoning board member, and you authorized me to ask questions that are limited to what was asked by the zoning hearing board. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I think it's getting when you ask <clears throat> what qualifies as a no impact business. No, I, didn't I, ask think, that. I think what I'm saying is that I think it's been asked and answered. As well, so I'm. I, I, That's not answering the objection. I understand, but I'm saying I think it's been asked and answered. So I'm going to going to say please move along and ask questions that were not gone into last hearing and that are within the scope of the questions today. After the first notice of violation. That you sent, that you handed to the Downs on December seventh. 
did you receive any complaints at all after that December 7th meeting from anybody concerning any commercial activity alleged to be conducted at the Runnymede Avenue uh, address? I don't believe I received any complaints. Okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Mr. Hitchens. Uh, briefly, uh, Mr. Locke, uh, you were asked by, by, by Mr. Yanov uh, what evidence you relied on. Um, would you agree with me that the <coughs> information contained in what was marked as document B11 sets forth the evidence that you relied upon? Yes, it does. Um, and would you agree with me that the evidence you relied upon uh, was the various written complaints, photographs, and videos that were, you received from the neighbor next door? That's correct. Uh, you were asked about by the board as to whether or not what information you take into consideration issuing a violation. Do you recall that? Yes. Uh, have you ever issued a violation based off of photographs, videos, or written complaints you've received from neighbors next door? You mean other than this? Other than this one. Other than this, yes. Yes. Um, uh, would that, in that other situation, uh, would that be a situation that would have involved the Downs as making complaints against the classes with regard to a similar or identical sort of violation at 303 running meet? Yes, it was. Um, now, you were asked on cross by Mr. Yanoff with regard to two letters that you had received. Uh, one was from a Mr. Gross dated December 18th, and one was from Mr. Yanoff's office dated January 9th. Do you recall that? Yes. Uh, with regard to Mr. Gross's letter, which was marked as applicant two, does anywhere in that letter, do they state, or does Mr. Gross state that the property, 301 Running League, is in violation of the, cur of, of the, of the borough zoning code? No. Uh, would you agree with me, sir, that the letter actually states that they are not <coughs> in violation of the zoning code? And would you agree with me that it states, quote, accordingly, any issues pertaining to the above violation are considered closed. Should you disagree, kindly reply with the basis of your opposition. I suppose to that. So was there any indication in Mr. Gross's letter that, that the Downses, whether they believed they were or were not in compliance, whether they were going to change their current activities in order to come into compliance? Objection. How can one change something that they're not doing? That's not an objection. Go ahead. Can you ask me again? Certainly. In reading this letter from Mr. Gross, is there anything in the letter that would suggest to you that the Downs has intended to change their current activities in a way that would bring them into compliance from what you would believe? Objection. There's no definition of what their, quote, current activities were going to be. There's no record for that. You believe they're not acting in a certain way. They do. So Mr. Hitchens is asking a fair question. Go ahead. What's the, the, let's address the, the objection, sir. There's no objection. I didn't hear any legal basis. You're just objection. Saying. There's, in, there's no foundation for what their current activities would be for this witness to testify from. There's nothing in the record at all. Uh, Mr. Solicitor, I'll try to rephrase my question. It might be helpful. Sure. Um, Mr. Locke, when an individual tells you that they're not in, when they, if an individual tells you that they believe they are not in compliance, what do you take that to understand? They were telling me that they're not in compliance? I'm sorry. And I'm glad you pointed that out. <laughs> if an individual tells you that they are currently in compliance, what is your understanding of that response? An objection. His understanding is not relevant. His understanding is very relevant. That they felt that they were in compliance. So, if an individual tells you, quote, in serving as such, rest assured that the Downs are and always have been in compliance with any and all permitted uses as defined in the applicable section of the Jenkintown Borough Code, Accordingly, any issues pertaining to the above violation are considered closed. Do you take that language to mean whether or not the Downs intend to change their current activities or not change their current activities? Objection. There's no foundation for what their current activities were. <coughs> this man testified said he saw no commercial activities. If I could ask you, Mr. Locke, did you believe that the current activities the Downs were engaged in was a violation of the zoning code? Objection. No foundation. <coughs> Mr. Yano. There was three hours of foundation a week ago. There, there was no over, foundation. There were pictures that on your objection. There was plenty of foundation. So, Mr. Locke, you believe the Downs is based off of their then current activities to be in violation, correct? Correct. 
And this letter was telling you that they were not going to in any way change their activities going forward because they didn't believe that they were in violation, correct? That is correct. Therefore, would it be a reasonable assumption that you believe that they were con going to continue the same activities that you previously believed to be in violation? Yes. Now, looking at the letter from January 9th, 2018, from Mr. Yano's office, again, same question. Is there any indication from that letter in which you believe the damages are acknowledging that they're currently in violation? Could you give me a And again, is there any notation or indication in that January 9th letter that the Downs' intend to change their activities in any way in order to come into compliance? No, there's no indication So based off of the lack of any indication that they're going to change or they're going to come into compliance, what would be your understanding of whether or not they're going to change their activities? And if they don't change their activities, would they or would they not be in compliance for your determination? No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't be in compliance? They wouldn't be in compliance, I apologize. Had you received a letter from the Downs' stating that they would in fact change their activities and come into compliance, would you have considered that to be sufficient enough to no longer proceed with the zoning enforcement? Yes. And did you get that? No. Sitting here today, have you received that? No. And finally, Mr. Locke, you were asked about whether or not you made an inspection, a physical inspection of the property from someplace beyond the public right of way. Do you recall that? Yes. Do you make it a habit to go into people's yards or people's houses? Not if I can help it. And why is that? Because of property rights, infringement on property rights. We try not to go on people's property unless we have to. If we could see it from the public right of way, that's where we would inspect it. And so if you had not received the various complaints, photographs, and videos from the glasses next door, do you believe you would have issued a violation with regard to the 301 running behind your property? No, I don't believe I would have. No other questions? Okay. I have some follow-up. Mr. Yano, I think we have to cut it off at some point. We're going to go back and forth on it. So let's move on. Well, since issues were raised by the redirect, I think I should be entitled to a question. Mr. Yano, I'm going to cut it off at this time. Mr. Hitchens, what's your next question? Well, I'd just like the record to reflect that I've been denied the opportunity to question on testimony that's just been elicited from the witness. I understood. Mr. Hitchens, what's your next witness? Who is your next witness? I'm going to call Christine Glass at this time. I believe she might be out in the vestibule area. Ms. Glass, if you could, what is your current address? 30300 Avenue. And is that in Jenkintown? It is. And what is that property in relation to 301 Running Meat Avenue? It's beyond the high school. And what type of residence is 303, your property? Single family home. And do you know what type of property 301 is? I'm assuming it's the same. Who resides in the house with you? My husband, a couple of children, and both my parents. When did you move into 303 Running Meat? September 1st of 2016. When you moved in in September 16th of, I'm sorry, September 1st, 2016, did you have a chance to meet the Downses who reside at 301 Running Meat? I did not. 
At any point since you've lived there, have you had a chance to meet the Thameses? So you've never, sitting here today, spoken to the Thameses? Um, a question was asked of Mr. Locke earlier, uh, and I'm not sure whether you were here or not that question. Um, how would you describe your relationship with the Downsys? We don't have a relationship. Yeah. 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 Would you say that you have an acrimonious um, objection leading? <laughs> Fair enough. I withdraw the question. Do you get along with the Downsys? Have there ever been any complaints or issues between you and the Downsys? Oh, I'm sorry, if you just keep your voice up, I yeah. can hear that. Sure, your hands, yes. And what were those complaints and issues? Um, we were getting complaints <coughs> continuously for um, our business. That started um, probably within the first week we were there. And what was that <coughs> business? We have a masonry concrete business. And if you could please describe for the board when you say you were receiving complaints about your business, what were the nature of those complaints? Uh, that they were, they believed that there was business activity on the property, uh, movement of commercial equipment on and off the property uh, for work. What was your understanding of the basis of that commercial objection relevance? Mr. Hitchens. I, I believe and I can represent to the board, uh, Ms. Glass is the individual who was a part of the prior case in front of Judge McHugh that both the board had asked about and that we had discussed during Mr. Locke's testimony that played into the factors of concern of Mr. Locke <coughs> making his determination. Therefore, I'm trying to get from this witness at least a description as to the activity she was engaged in so that the board has an ability to understand and consider how it is in relation to the activities alleged against the counsels. It's really not relevant to the determination of this violation. It, it is to the extent that I believe the board member had asked whether or not there were factors that were considered, and therefore I'm trying to present to the board the factors <coughs> that were considered in the glasses case, so the, the board can compare them to the factors at issue in the downs. Well, case. but this witness is not the person who testifies about the factors to be considered. You foreclosed me from asking the, the one person in this room who could have identified those factors. This witness is not the person who should be identifying the legal factors that went into the consideration of what that violation was. And respectfully, I would disagree. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Yanov had an opportunity during the direct and cross-examination of Mr. Locke to go through the factors. In fact, I would suggest to you that if you read the transcript, I went through those factors and had discussed those. Second, I think Ms. Glass is, is actually the best suited to explain to the board what she was doing and what they were, what from those activities she was doing she got cited for. But she is the very person who owns the property of which those alleged activities were occurring. Who best to explain to this board what those activities were? But those activities are not before the board right now. And I'm not suggesting that they are before the board. I'm merely suggesting that these are a part of the comparison that I think the board I, should in, entertain. I'm understood, not understood, understood. I think that, I think that it also goes Photographs that seem to be very important in this case were taken by Ms. Glass. Her credibility is certainly relevant in this case. So a little bit of background as to what was going on leading up to those photographs being taken and the violations I will allow, but not extensive. Understood. Um, so with that instruction, Ms. Glass, um, if you could just briefly state what were the activities that you were allegedly engaged in at your property that constituted operating a business? We had some of our signs on the property. Um, there were, they were saying that the equipment that we were using for business was being taken off the property and brought back on. Um, complaints list went on and on, uh, down to buckets or bags of tools. And when you say equipment, what equipment are you referring to? Um, well, commercial equipment, which would be jackhammers, big heavy duty equipment, which was not the case. Are we talking about dump trucks or backloaders? Objection. Leading. When you say commercial equipment, are we talking large scale equipment or small scale equipment? Large scale. I'm sorry. What was that answer? 
Large scale. Large scale. What do you mean by large scale? Cut saws, large, large equipment that a masonry company would need to use. Jackhammers. Large, large tools. Exactly. Okay. So at some point you, you recited, correct? I was. And were you found in violation? I was. And who found you in violation? I was the law. <coughs> did that issue ever go to court? It did. And what? And were you there? I was. Uh, was anybody else there? Uh, the Downs were there. Yeah. And who was that before? Uh, Judge McHugh. And what did Judge McHugh decide? Uh, that you were in violation. Um, so after you were found in violation, did you change your activities at all at your property? Objection, relevance. Withdrawn. Um, at some point, uh, Ms. Glass, did you start taking any photographs or making any complaints with regard to uh, the 301 property? I did. Why did you do that? Penetrating sound of the commercial lawnmower that was running several times a week right next door to my home. And so, first, I had previously marked a series of photographs. At this time, I just would like to go briefly through you, with you through those photographs. So, I'm going to show you first complaint dated. This is B2, dated 10 25, 2016. And I'm going to hold off so Mr. Yanoff is able to pull it out should he need to. And while Mr. Yanoff is looking, feel free to look for it. <coughs> summarize for the board what your complaint was about on 10-25-2016. Objection. B2 speaks for itself. It's a document which we've gone over and over again with Mr. Locke. <laughs> it's certainly relevant what her what she observed on October 25, 2016. The document says that. That's the best evidence. She asked what was the complaint. It says it right there. It says, I have watched. I have witnessed. Go ahead, Mr. Mr. Marley. Um, the best evidence rule doesn't apply when we're discussing with the witness who actually prepared the document itself. Certainly the witness has a right to testify and explain and to describe what it was that they were communicating. That she needs to do it without the document. That is. Are you asking her whether it refreshes her recollection? You're not asking that. No, hold on. Speak to me, Mr. Yale. Sorry. I have no problem if the witness wants to put the document down, explain to the board, and then as needed, I will show her photographs if that would make Mr. Yano happy. It doesn't do make me happy. Why don't we do that because it's, it's, it seems legally appropriate. Why you ask her questions, Mr. Hitchens, if she needs to be refreshed with a document or a photograph, you can do that. Certainly. Ms. Glass, I'm going to ask you from your recollection, if at any point you don't recall something, please let me know and we'll have an opportunity for you to review your documents in order to refresh your recollection. So, Ms. Glass, turning again to your October 25th, 2016 complaint, if you could briefly explain to the board what your complaint was about. Um, in addition to the noise that the lawnmower was making, I was witnessing the equipment on the truck several times a week um, and the truck leaving the property. And what, what about the truck was concerning to you? There was equipment on there. There was bags, uh, backpack blowers, weed whackers, um, and the sound of the lawnmower, every time it needs, this isn't a lawnmower that you can just push on there, it needs to be running. It's, it's a large last, piece of equipment. I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. Skags? I don't know what It's, it's a, the big commercial lawnmowers that my neighbors use. It's not your regular push mower. It's large. Objection, she's without, this was no foundation for her expertise mm -hmm. with respect to that. I think we can speak to lawnmowers. 
I don't so think we can speak to them whether the commercial lawnmowers or not. This witness is not qualified to testify to that. She's saying in her experience, I'll allow it. Well, I have, we haven't heard her experience. <coughs> the question was asked by the board, Mr. Marlier. I think the witness has a right to answer a question that's been asked by the board. I think the witness can speak to the size of lawnmowers and, and what she thinks about those lawnmowers, whether they're commercial or residential. Um, this guys, are these sit-down lawnmowers? Or are they just you push them, they're <coughs> controlled, hand controlled. I believe the front wheel kind of pull it, they're larger and they're quite round. Thank you. As a part of your uh, October 25th, 2016 complaint, did you provide any photographs to the township? I did. I'm so sorry, to the borough. Uh, and I'm going to show you uh, what will be the last two pages of B2. Uh, are these the photographs that you provided? Yes. Okay. With regard to the first photograph, if you could, please explain to the board, what are you trying, why did you take that picture? <clears throat> I took that to show that there was landscaping going on, and landscaping going on the and And with regard to the second picture, what is that a picture of? Uh, that's actually the original picture, the second one is a photograph. Okay, and again, what is that that you're referring to for the record? The trailer, the transport equipment. Now, you would agree with me that the trailer shows a table sitting on it at the moment, correct? Did you ever see that trailer used by the Downs? I have several times. How did you see the Downs use that trailer? Um, hooked up to the truck with equipment on it for years. What type of equipment? Now, after you made this October 25th, 2016 complaint, do you recall if you ever had a conversation with Mr. Locke with regard to your complaint? I don't know. I'm going to now turn to what has been marked as B3. If you could please take a few minutes to look through that. Are we asking her to refresh her recollection? <coughs> Mr. Marlier, since I had Mr. Locke identify these, and Mr. Yanoff, during Mr. Locke's testimony, stated that Mr. Locke, having not prepared these, um, I couldn't admit them into evidence, I clearly need this witness in order to identify that these are, in fact, the complaints that she made in order that I could admit them into evidence. So I think she has a right to review the document itself so I can say, is this the complaint, and therefore I can later admit it into evidence. However, I have had a courtesy and fairness and respect to Mr. Yanoff. I'm happy to have her place the document down again <coughs> and go over her recollection before referring to any specific statements. Well, frankly, I think that would be extremely cumbersome. And I think we can go through these quicker if she looks at it and we just move this along. Ms. <coughs> Glass, if you could, please explain to the board what your 9 2017 complaint was about. I do now recall that I was told uh, by the borough that objection. You're saying told by the borough that the borough is actually a party to these proceedings, therefore it would be an exception to hearsay as an admission by a party. Except that there's no identification as to who said it under what circumstance. Well, I, think, I think she may be getting to that. But by that time the testimony is already out. I'm going to allow it. It is a party. <coughs> Excuse me, the, 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 the party status only party goes to admissions. It doesn't go to hearsay comments made by somebody. There's no admission here. Mr. Marlier, I could refer to Pennsylvania rules of evidence, which are actually just statements by parties, not admissions. <coughs> you don't have to. She can answer the question. <coughs> She may need the question again, Mr. Miss <laughs> um, Glass, I was asking you about uh, your 9 20 2017 complaint. Um, if you could please summarize for the board uh, why you sent the 9 2017 complaint. Because I was told by the borough that the Downs um, said they were not running a landscaping business, um, and I wasn't satisfied. 
that that ain't sure because of the continued things that we're seeing being done on the property. Uh, and generally, what was contained, or what were you complaining about at, on September 20th of 2017 in your complaint? I sent photos and videos of the equipment. Um, well, you mentioned photos first. Uh, let's go through very briefly the photos that you have in here. I'm turning to the first photograph, which is marked August 24th, 2017. Um, first, is that your handwriting? And I'm flipping through the other photographs, which also contain handwriting. Do you see that? Is that all your handwriting? Uh, and I would ask as we go through these photographs, and if any time you see handwriting on a photograph that does not belong to you, to please let us know. Otherwise, we'll presume that the handwriting on there belongs to you. So, this August 24th, 2017 photograph, why did you take this picture? Uh, this was shortly after the equipment left the driveway again. Um, so, which one are we looking at? August 24th, 2017, 6.38 p.m. Yes. I believe, yes, and, and for the record, it's the first photograph showing a red brick building with an individual standing there and a white fence in front and a car. Um, so my question was, why did you take this photograph? Um, to prove that they were going around cutting people's grass. They were running on landscaping buildings. And is this, a, is this a picture of the 301 property? And who's in the photograph? Right, yeah. I'm going to show the next picture, which uh, has writing on it that contains the words weed whacker at his feet. Did you write that? I did. Okay. And what is that a photo? Why did you take that photo? It's actually the original photo, but it's um, didn't get it so that you can see the equipment there. Why did you want to take a picture of the weed whacker? <coughs> Flipping to the next picture, this is September 18th, 2000, 2017, 6.21 p.m. Uh, why did you take this picture? Uh, first, uh, do you know who is, I, who is the individual in that photograph? Is that the same property in the prior photo or is that a different property? And flipping to the next picture, this appears to be a photograph, again, dated September 18, 2017. Uh, what is that a photo showing? Um, that's a close-up of the backpack blower and the weed here. Uh, and again, why did you take that picture? <laughs> and then flipping to the next photograph, uh, again, uh, why did you take this picture? And who is in the photograph? That would be Ryan. Is this the same house that we were seeing in the prior photographs? And turning to the next one, this is September 18th, 2017. It's dated 6.26 p.m. Uh, first, uh, who's depicted in the photograph? <coughs> and is this the same property that the prior photographs were at? Why did you take this picture? What, if, what about this picture made you think that it shows that they're running a landscaping business? The bounds was at the front door while Ryan was on the side, uh, kind of long. So I believe that he was collecting the money for services. Objection. Well, I'll do it on process. <coughs> this is the next picture, August 17, 2017, 621 p.m. Uh, uh, first, uh, did you take this photo? I did. Uh, who's depicted in the photograph? David Cam. Uh, and what is this photo showing? Everything you need to run away from taking business, apparently. We have, Objection. Uh, yes, that'd be stricken. This is a picture of somebody on the phone. Mr. <laughs> we're looking at the next picture, and she's testifying as to what she's observing. I see that the back of David Downs. There's the weed eater to the left on the ground. There's the big and why did you take this photograph? 
going to turn to the next photograph. This is again August 17, 2017, 6:21 p.m. Um, what does this picture show? <coughs> For purposes of the record, could you describe the backpack lower that you're just that you're referring to? Uh, that's blue and black piece of equipment the ground. Um, and where is this photograph taken? Uh, that's and where is that driveway in relation to your property? Uh, it's right next door to the right. I'm going to go to the. Next photograph, this is again dated August 17, 2017, 21 p.m. Um, would you agree with me that this is a photograph similar to the prior two? Yes. Taken on the same day? Yes. And again, why did you take this photograph? <coughs> and we're going to go to the last photograph, dated October 21st, 2016, 12 57 p.m. Just taken. Several months before, why did you include this photograph again in your September complaint? Because when I originally complained, October 21st, 2016, I was told that it objection. Happen. We've already been through this objection. There's no identification. Now she says I was told. Who told you? Somebody in the borough. Objection. <laughs> I don't recall. Well, then it should be straight. I have no objection to being straight. I'll move on. Um, Ms. Glass, did you make any subsequent complaints after September 25th, 2017 in writing? Yes. I'm going to show you another document marked B4. If you could, please. Uh, is this B4, Mr. Hitchin? It is B4. Mm -hmm. I believe we were just on B4. I had one stick. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at B4, Ms. Glass, again, for time's sake, is this the complaint that you filed with the, the firm? It is. And why did you file this complaint? For continued business activity. And there's a single photograph attached to what was marked as B4. Do you see that? I do. Okay. And this is a photograph that you took on September 24, 2017? And why did you, well, first, what does the photo depict? <coughs> it's the green board pickup. Oh, did you say green? Green. And uh, where is this truck located? The down truck. Moving on to B5. Um, uh, Ms. Glass, would you agree with me that B5 is, is the complaint that you filed with the borough on September 29, 2017? And what was this complaint with regard to? And this complaint also contained photographs, is that correct? Turning to the first photograph with B5, this was a photograph that was taken on September 26, 2017, is that correct? And the handwriting there, is that your handwriting? Okay. What does this picture show? Um, and why did you take this picture? What about this picture makes you think that it shows continued business activity? Um, the lawnmower's not on his property. They need to take him back from somewhere else. I'm going to go to the second photograph. Again, also dated September 26th. Um, what does this picture show? And the third photograph, also dated September 26th, what does that show? That's a close up photo. So there's no mistake in that it is the ranks. <clears throat> I'm going to show you what has been marked as B6. Uh, this is a complaint dated 10 3 2017. Is this the complaint that you filed with the borough with regard to the 301 property? It is. And why did you file this complaint? For continued business activity. 
And with this complaint, did you attach any photographs? Okay. In order to run through this quickly, I'm going to have you just describe very briefly to the board what the photographs show and why you took them. So, with regard to the first photograph, October 3rd, 2017, what does this show and why did you take it? In the second photograph, what does that show? That was Mr. Downs pulling out of the driveway with the equipment on the back of the truck. The third photo, what does that show? It's a closer image. I'm sorry, what's that? It's a closer image. Image of what? Of the equipment on the back of the truck. And where was the truck going? Radically, it was just being backed up out of the driveway. The fourth picture? Even a closer image. Of? Of the lawnmower in the back of the truck. And again, for purposes of the record, where is the truck located in this picture? It's pulling out of the Downs driveway. The fifth picture? Is the back of the truck as it's pulling away from the property. Away from their property. Is this truck at this point on the street or not on the street? It's on the street. And these were all taken the same day, correct? They were, yes. Now, I'm going to go to the next picture. This is a picture dated October 3rd, 2017, and it just shows a sign saying Grace Presbyterian Church. Did you take this photo? I did. Why did you take this photo? To show where the truck was located. How did you know the truck was located there? There's several pictures. You've seen the truck as you were passing. Okay. So I'll go to the next one. So this is a photograph dated October 3rd, 2017, 4, 12 p.m. Some handwriting, which is your handwriting. What is this photograph showing? It shows Mr. Downs' truck parked in Grace Presbyterian Church. And why do you believe this picture suggests there's business activity going at 301 Running Wheel? It's his landscaping equipment being taken off of his property and taken to another property. And I'm going to go to the next photo. This is also dated October 3rd, 2017. What is this a picture of? A poster image of the lawnmower in the back of the truck. And where is it located at? Grace Presbyterian Church. The next photo, October 3rd, 2017. What is this a picture of? Even a closer photo of the lawnmower in the back of the truck. At Grace Presbyterian Church. Okay. Moving on to the next complaint. This has been marked as B7. Now, Ms. Glass, is this a complaint that you filed with the borough? It is. Is this complaint dated by you? It is. Where is the date by you? March 27th, 2017. Okay. Oh, it's in there. Is that 9-20-2017? Yes, 9-20-2017. And this was attached to my original complaint. This is another complaint, October 17th. That needs to be attached to my original complaint dated 9-20-2017. You just said a lot there. And in an effort to help clean up the record, looking at this document, when do you think you submitted this complaint? It would be in October. Why do you think that? Because it was received staff from the borough. Okay. And what was this complaint about? I read it over here. Your voice is dropping. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, I made several. So I would need to review it. That's something to do with landscaping business, I'm sure. Okay. And did this complaint contain photographs? It did. Okay. I went through the first photograph. Are these pictures, Mr. Hitchens, I'm sorry to interrupt, but aren't these the same as B? I would agree. So if I could ask the witness whether they're the same, and we can get that on the record, we can move on to the next one. Definitely. That's all I'm asking. No, thank you. Ms. Glass, would you agree with me that these are the same photographs that you identified in your prior complaint? It is. Okay. Moving on to your next complaint. This has been marked as B-8. Is this a complaint that you filed on October 20th, 2017 with the borough? It is. 
And what was this complaint about? And did this complaint contain any photographs? I turn to the first photograph. If you could briefly describe, say, what the photograph is and why you took it. Ms. Glass, if you can just keep your voice up, please. Sure. Thank Which you. photograph is that? This is the first photograph, October 17, 2017, dated 7.42 a.m., with the writing, truck loaded with commercial equipment in its driveway. Is that the October 17th? So is it the second photograph? What is that a picture of, and why did you take it? It's a closer image to that. You can tell that there's two long lines in the back. The third image. What is this? I'm sorry, Pat. Mr. Hitchens, the board's just catching up with the photographs. Oh, yeah. I apologize. No, no, no. You have no problem. The date of the one you're looking at. Oh, certainly. October 17, 2017, 7.42 a.m., writing closer image. Great. Thank you, Mr. Hitchens. And again, Ms. Glass, why did you take this picture? To show its continued business movement on the property. And what does the picture depict in your opinion? There is not only one, but there's two lawnmowers in the back of there. I would definitely say that was being used for business. Turning to the third photograph, this is dated October 17, 2017, at 1.31 p.m. What does this picture show, and why did you take it? And the next photograph, again, dated October 17, 2017, at 1.31. What does this picture show, and why did you take it? Closer image of the truck with the equipment in it. To show no business activity. Mr. Hitchens, if I could, and if this is not the way you want to do this, just tell me. But could we stipulate that every photograph she took was to show that the landscaping business was going on? I have no problem with that. As long as we're not admitting that they're conducting the landscaping business. I don't think. It's merely her opinion. It's what she observed. So I think. It's not what she observed. It's what she was testifying she observed. So we need to go through each one every time. If that's what they're for, that's fine. So I think, Mr. Hitchens, if you can go through what's in the picture, what she believes is in the picture, but without the question of why did you take this, because I think she took every picture to prove there was landscaping. I have no problem with it. Actually, the last ones. If we can just move through this quickly. It appears that the theme here is that she took photographs because she believed that what she saw was the Downs running a commercial operation. Or a landscaping operation. I would certainly agree with the board. I'm just merely trying to make sure the board is aware of all the photographs that have been received by the municipality, all the complaints that have been received by the municipality. So, again, the board understands what prompted the municipality to take the action. Is this different than the photographs that were shown by Mr. Locke? Well, since Mr. Yanow had objected to the photographs and the information because Mr. Locke did not take any of the photographs, I have to use this witness procedurally in order to get this information into evidence. Understood. Why don't you continue, please? Ms. Glass, what does this picture show dated October 17, 2017 at 1.31 p.m.? It shows the Downs truck loaded with landscaping equipment at First Presbyterian Church. I turn to the next photograph. This is a photograph dated October 18, 2017, 4.50 p.m. What does this photograph show? Is this property on Running Meet? Is it 301 Running Meet? No. I turn to the next photograph, October 18, 2017, 4.50 p.m. What does this photograph show? And what property is this again? And the next photograph, dated October 18, 2017 at 5.00 p.m. What is this a photograph of? And 
And then the last photograph, what is this a photograph of? I'm going to show you, it's been marked as uh, B9. This is another complaint from you dated October 24, 2017. <coughs> is this a complaint that you filed with the firm? If you could. Uh, what does this complaint contain? Excuse me. If you'd like, please take a moment to look at the document to refresh your recollection as to what the complaint is about. And when you're done, please put the document in. Flash, you put the document down. Um, having reviewed the is your recollection refresh as to what your complaint in 2017 was about. Yes. And again, it was my frustration that I was continuing this activity going on and nothing else. I'm going to show you a document that's been marked as B10. You can take a look at what is contained in B10. Didn't ask any questions yet. So you had a chance, uh, Ms. Glass, to take a look at B10. If you could, um, what are the documents contained in B10? I was looking for an answer to my complaint. Uh, and you accidentally summoned me. <laughs> um, to be to be clear, are these emails from you to the firm? It is. Uh, what are these emails about? Wanting an answer to my. Uh, and so, in addition to these emails, photographs, and written complaints, did you ever come to any council meetings uh, to make complaints with regard to uh, activities occurring at 301 Running Bean Target? Um, do you recall the dates of when you came to those meetings? I don't recall. Do you recall the number of times you came to those meetings? I'm going to show you a document. I'm going to hand a copy to Mr. Yen. <coughs> Um, if you could, please take a moment to take a look at that. Can we mark this? <coughs> uh, I, I, yeah, I might as well. I'll mark it as B14. <coughs> and while Ms. Glass reviews it, uh, I will represent to the board B14 is a copy of the meeting minutes from the December 11, 2017 uh, meeting of uh, the Jenkintown Borough Council. The document contains highlighting that I placed on it um, in order to speed things along. Um, <coughs> Ms. Ms. Glass, um, having reviewed this document, do you recall whether or not you attended the December 11, 2017 meeting? And when you attended that meeting, um, what, if any, comments did you make to Borough Council? And I'm going to show you a document that I'll mark as B15 and handing a copy to opposing counsel. Again, this is, please take a moment to look at it, Ms. Glass. I'll represent to the board B15 is a copy of the public meeting minutes for the November 27, 2017 <coughs> meeting um, of the Jenkintown Borough Council. And again, it contains highlighting that I placed on it. Ms. Glass, having looked at that document, do you recall whether or not you went to the November 27, 2017 meeting? I do. And what, if anything, did you say to counsel? I asked for some answers to my original complaints. I'm going to mark as B16 <coughs> another document I'm handing to counsel. I'd ask Ms. Glass to review this. Uh, while Ms. Glass is reviewing it, I will represent to the board 
that this is a copy of the public meeting minutes for October 23rd, 2017 of the Jenkintown Borough Council. And again, it contains highlighting that I placed on the document in order to speed things up. I will hand up to the board my copies at once. Sounds good. <coughs> Class, uh, you had an opportunity to review B16. Um, do you recall, were you at the October 23rd, 2017 meeting? I was. And what, if anything, did you say to council? Objection. The document speaks for itself. It's minutes of the meeting. That's the best evidence of what was said. I have absolutely no objection. I'll just admit B16 and whatever reflects as the comments. I have no problem well, with Well, you won't admit it. You'll offer it for, for Mr. Yano. That's fine. I have no problem with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so then we'll just do B17, which is the last one. Again, Ms. Glass, please take a look at this. And while Ms. Glass looks at it, I'm going to make a representation to the board that this is a copy of the October 19, 2017 Public Safety Committee meeting. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Glass, you had an opportunity to review B-17. Um, do you recall, were you at the October 19, 2017 Public Safety Committee? And do you agree that whatever's contained in there were the comments that you made to council? <laughs> With that, I have... Ms. Glass, does that go for the other three documents as well? <clears throat> With that, I have no further questions of this witness. Yeah, we're going to stop for a five minute break here. Uh, we will be continuing at, uh, let's put it at 8.28 on that clock. other than to prove that they were operating a landscaping business. Stop the noise. I kept generating So if Mr. Ba Downs was mowing his own lawn next door to you, you would consider that to be a problem for you. Because isn't that what you're saying? Hold, hold on. Ask your question, Mr. Young. Would you consider that a problem, ma'am? It wouldn't be a problem if it was limited. We're talking several times a week. So your objection is that Mr. Downs cut his own lawn several times a week, and that's why you followed him around the neighborhood to take pictures of him in his truck. Well, then, it sounds to me like it did. Why don't you explain it to me? You, uh, strike that. Uh, let me ask you this way. You just told us that the noise was your motivation, and that you didn't like that he cut his lawn two or three times a week, and that noise was the motivation for you following them around the neighborhood. Is that what you told us? Uh, well, then why don't you correct it for me? The noise, which is quite loud, um, and the video here, if you'd like to hear it, I don't know if you would like to hear it, but maybe they will. Of the sound that comes from this lawnmower when it's running. Cutting his own lawn. Cutting his own lawn or moving the equipment onto the truck to service someone else. But the equipment wasn't running when it went on the truck, right? It's off. No, sir, it's running. <coughs> How many lawnmowers were there? There's usually one. Just large one. Lawnmower. One large lawnmower. Mm -hmm. So, again, your objection is that you didn't like the noise coming from this one large lawnmower when he was cutting his own lawn. That's what your motivation is, right? Well, then, again, I don't understand. Explain this to me. I have constant noise. From where? From next door. From his own from property. From the lawnmower being run, not to cut his own property, but to make it look like he's cutting his own property.
property in order to get the lawnmower onto the truck to take it to the property. How does, how does one look like they're cutting their own property? I have videos. I'm asking you a question. I don't want to hear about a video. I'm asking you a direct okay. question. So let's say Mr. Downs cuts his lawn on Monday. Now, he doesn't only do his own lawn. He does his mother's next door. So you're looking at about an hour and a half worth of noise. I expect it. You have to cut your lawn. But then the very next day, for a lawnmower to run for only 10 minutes, cut off, then several hours later, you hear that. It started again for about 10 minutes. And that is him taking the lawnmower on and off the truck. That noise, my office is in the back of the house. I have a huge sliding window in my office. When the office window is open, the noise. I could be on the phone, <laughs> making appointments, I could be working. And so, it it so let me, me. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Are you finished? Mm -hmm, I am. Good, thank you. So just to make sure I understand it. If he cuts his lawn once a week, and then two 10-minute sessions of the lawnmower running is your motivation for following him around the neighborhood and taking pictures of him at other properties. Yeah, I knew that the Downs had a landscaping business for years. How did you know that? I've lived in this town for 32 years. And you just moved next door in 2016, you told us, right? But I have a son that is one grade lower than mine. And you know that as of the date of the violations, the Downs were running a landscaping business out of their house. Mm -hmm. Yes? A much smaller scale, but yes, they yes. were running business. And the basis for that was what? The equipment, again, being taken on and off the property. Okay. Do you know what Mr. Downs does for, uh, does for a living? Um, I've heard. But I don't what know have you heard? Uh, that he works for Grace Presbyterian Church. Really? And do you know what his position is? I do not. Do you know that he's the sexton of Grace Presbyterian Church? No. No, you don't know that. I do, not know do you know what his job responsibilities are for as sexton for Grace Presbyterian Church? Objection. Objection. Uh, the witness has already testified she doesn't know what his job is. She doesn't know what he does. So how would she be able to answer? I'm trying. I'm trying to delve a little deeper as to his, what she took. Strike that. She took pictures of his truck at Grace Presbyterian Church. I'm trying to get her to tell us why she believes that was part of a landscaping business. Understood, but, but if you asked what, if she knew what his job was there and she says no, and then you say, does he use a hammer in his job, the answer would obviously be no. So I'd ask you to move on. If I suggested to you that as Sexton, his job responsibility is to maintain the property and cut the grass at Grace Presbyterian Church, okay. would you believe that to him, him to be, instantly had no additional cost other than his salary? Would you agree that that is not running a landscaping business? Objection. First, it's argumentative. Second, it calls for a legal conclusion. This witness isn't the one who makes the determination as to whether or not somebody's running or not running a business. We just spent an hour her telling us that those pictures identify the running of a landscape business. I'm trying to delve a little deeper. She, I'm not asking for a legal conclusion. I'm asking her opinion. <coughs> Mr. Gannell, then ask about why those she has those opinion about those pictures. I don't think I'm only you're concerned asking. about Grace Presbyterian Church right now. I, I haven't talked about the rest of the pictures yet, and I want to know what the basis of her opinion, based upon the fact that this gentleman is the sexton taking care of the landscaping business. Which she testified she didn't know whether he was a sexton or what his duties are. So how could she testify as to whether or not? And so I'm asking I, I if, if if you were told that he is the sexton of the Grace Presbyterian Church and that part of his job responsibilities were taking care of the landscaping and the property of Grace Presbyterian Church. Do you think that that would mean that he was running a landscaping business from his home? Same objection. I'm going to, I'm going to allow Mr. Hitchens. Mr. Mr. With his own equipment? Does the church not have their Ma'am, I'm, I'm merely asking you a question. I'm, I'm asking to, yes or no. I'm going to object to Mr. Yanoff's response. The witness has a right to respond to the question in any way she seems to. She doesn't have a right to ask me questions. She's, but I think she's confused, so why are you? Are you confused, ma'am? I'm, I'm a little confused. Okay. Let's assume that Mr. Downs, hypothetically, works for Grace Presbyterian Church as a sexton. And part of his job responsibilities 
are to take care of the lawn and the landscaping and the property at Grace Presbyterian Church as part of his job. And as part of his job, he gets to use his own equipment. Would you consider that <coughs> operating a landscaping business out of his home? I would look at that as a customer, yes, I would. Okay. <coughs> you just made reference to the fact that your office is in the house. <laughs> what exactly are you doing in an office in your house? Objection, relevance. Well, What's she opened. Excuse me. She just Excuse testified. Mr. Yano. She just I'm testified. I'm asking what the relevance is. Okay, That's the relevance what? is that she's now opened the door to a question of whether or not she is operating a business in her own home and whether or not that is her part of her motivation. It goes to bias and motivation. I have no objection he wants to ask her whether she's been cited for operating a business out of her back office. That's coming. <laughs> I see that as being relevant. I see no relevance in discussing further. As well. well, I'm laying a foundation, Mr. Morlier. I want to find I'm out what... foundation. Thank you. What is the business that, you're, that you need an office in your own home for? Bad English, but you understand the question. Masonry. So you're running your masonry business out of your own home, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And isn't that exactly what you were cited for? Operating a business out of your home? No, you weren't cited for that. Running a business out of my office? Out of your home. No. Your office is in your home. Yes, I was not, I'm allowed to have my office in my home. But you just told us you're running your masonry business out of your office in your home. Yes. And. Is it your opinion that a running a commercial business out of your home is permitted in the B1 residential district? Is Objection. that your understanding? Objection. Mr. Mr. Yanoff, move on. I, I think you made your point. <clears throat> I think I'm entitled to an answer. I, I don't think that question is, 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 I think that's beyond the pale. Go ahead. Keep going. Are you running a business out of your home, ma'am? Objection. It goes objective. to motivation and bias. Just Not, the same. You, you, Mr. Yanoff, you're asking about right now. We're going to give a time period. If you want to go to motivation about when she was complaining, All right, I'll check, maybe I'll check. that would be more relevant. From 2016, when you moved into the property, right. until, what's today's date? June 7th. June 8th, 2018. Have you been operating a business out of your own home? I do, I guess. Okay. I just want to make sure that that's on the record. Now, you've indicated that there are, that you observed in your following uh, Mr. Downs around, you observed him cutting the lawns in addition to Grace a Presbyterian Church in three other properties. Is that correct? Yes. Was it two or three? I've seen him cut three different properties. Three different properties. Do you know who lives there? I don't. Do you ever inquire as to who lives there? No. no. Did you ever inquire as to why Mr. Downs may have been cutting the lawn at those particular properties? No. no. Okay. Do you think that's a relevant inquiry? Objection. Goes to bias and motivation. <coughs> Ask your question. <coughs> you can answer, Ms. 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 Claus. I'm sorry, ask again? Do you think that it might have been a relevant consideration as to who was living in those houses and why Mr. Downs was cutting their lawn? Well, I guess we'll hear from those people shortly. <laughs> Other than those three properties, that's right there. Did you ever see Mr. Downs cutting the grass at Grace Presbyterian Church? Actually cutting the grass. Where, if anywhere, did you actually see Mr. Downs cutting grass? Where are we His own property. Uh, no. What's the address? I'm not sure what the address is. Three doors down from him. Okay. And where else? Uh, Rodman. Where else? I've seen him. Um, and then his and his mother's. <coughs> and his mother's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does your husband cut his mother's grass? And does he load his lawnmower onto his truck on your property and then take that lawnmower to his mother's house to cut his mother's grass? Actually, no. He uses a weed eater. 
does he load the weed eater on the back of your truck and then take it down to his mother's property to take care of the lawn? He does. Do you consider that to be the operation of a commercial landscaping business on your property? Because you are taking, not you, your husband is taking equipment, loading it on the back of his truck, and driving it to another property. Is that, is that the operation of a commercial landscaping business? Objection. What's the difference? Hold on, Mr. She answered already. I, I, I didn't hear the, the answer. Can we just ask the question and Mr. Hitchens objected. Go ahead. Can you read that back to me, please? Which one? The last, the last question. question. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Question, do you consider that to be the operation of a commercial landscaping business on your property because you were, not you, your husband, is taking equipment, loading it on the back of his truck, and driving it to another property? Is that the operation of a commercial landscaping business? Answer, no. Isn't that exactly, isn't that exactly what you're complaining that Mr. Downs was doing? Loading equipment on the back of his truck and driving it to another property and cutting somebody else's lawn there. Several times a week. Isn't it the same activity? No, it's not. Because so, so there's always being generated from my equipment. I'm not disturbing anyone. So it's the noise that is the commercial business activity in your mind. Is that correct? Not the transport of the equipment. It's the noise that's the commercial. Well, he's transporting the equipment. So again, I ask you, your husband is transporting lawn cutting equipment in your truck taking it to another location and cutting the lawn at that other location isn't that right objection asked and answer she backtracked i don't i think i'm entitled to hear the answer again i, I don't think she backtracked she said she, but but i think your line of questioning can continue but that question has been asked and answered. <clears throat> I'm really not sure what you just told me. <laughs> <laughs> That's your next question. Oh, it's sustained. It's you sustained that objection? I did. It's been asked and answered, Mr. Is, isn't Mr. Downs, in your opinion, based upon your testimony, without an admission on our part, isn't he taking lawn cutting equipment and loading it on the back of his truck? And based upon your testimony, driving it to another property and cutting the lawn on another property. Isn't that what he's doing? Objection, asked and answered. That, that was not asked and answered. That's a different question. If, if Mr. Yanoff, you asked if he, she, her husband did this for his mother's property. She said yes. Now you're saying, generally speaking, does he do it? So it's been asked and answered. No, I told, I, that question was Mr. Downs. That was not, not her husband. That's your question. Isn't that what Mr. Downs is doing? Isn't he, again, loading landscaping equipment on the back of his truck, driving to another property, and cutting the lawn at another property, just like your husband? My husband does it once a week. So again, it's the number of times, not the noise. Objection. Or is it, is it the noise or the number of times? <laughs> I don't think she's actually answered that question. <clears throat> I disagree with you. So I'm saying you can ask it. I don't think she's answered the question. So ask Thank your you. question, Mr. Yanoff. <coughs> repeat it, please. Thank you. Question. Is it the noise or the number of times? There was an objection. You want the one before that? that? And the one before that, please. Question again, it's the number of times, not the noise. Objection is the answer. Question, is it the noise or the number of times? You want the one before that? Isn't, no, isn't that what Mr. Downs is doing? Mm -hmm. Isn't he, again, loading landscaping equipment on the back of his truck, driving to another property and cutting the lawn at another property, just like your husband? Answer, my husband does it once a week. Question, again, it's the number of times, not the noise. Objection. So what is it? It's the number it's of times. It's both. It's both. So the noise of, of the lawnmower is on somebody's own property is, is your concern, is that right? The noise is what's bothering me. Okay, in your office, in conducting in your business office, at home. In my office, in my kitchen, all my windows face their backyard. So yes, I can hear it throughout the house. Loud enough that if I'm who on the phone... Who cuts the... Who cuts... I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Loud enough that if I'm on the phone, I need to 
intended to close the window and I finish my conversation. Who cuts the lawn in your house? My husband, my son. Does he use a lawnmower? He uses a lawnmower. Does it make any noise? Yes. Yeah. Does? Yes. Yeah. Lawnmowers make noise, right? They do. They do. Yes, they do. Yeah. Did you actually ever observe in your travels behind Mr. Downs, did you ever actually observe Mr. Downs receiving money for the operation of this so-called landscaping business? Um, Marvin Avenue. Again, the photo was... Show me the photo that shows him receiving money. You haven't looked at it yet, I'm sorry. I think she's in the process of looking through it. I, I didn't realize. I thought she had gotten it already. What's the exhibit now? talking about that shows him collecting money mm -hmm. is September 18, 2017 at 626 p.m. Is that the, is that the picture? Yeah. What is it that Mr. Downs is actually doing in that photograph? At that point, he's taking a picture of me, taking a picture of him. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't quite look like you saw him collecting money in this picture, is that correct? Um, when I first pulled up, his back was to us. So his back was to you, right? And I would object. I thought she was finished. Finish. She's not yeah. Yeah. Let, let's let her <clears throat> let her answer your question fully. Um, and he, he turned around and looked at me, and took a picture of you. Camera. He didn't quite get a picture of me at that that moment, but he's I guess opening up the camera to his phone. Forgive me, ma'am, and maybe. Maybe I'm not looking at this correctly, but I don't see that this picture shows any money transacted. In fact, I only see one person in this picture, and that's Mr. Downs looking at his phone. Objection. Where's the question? Yeah. Ask your question, Mr. Does this picture show anything else other than Mr. Downs looking at his phone, I guess, in your, in your words, trying to take a picture of you taking a picture of him? In this picture? No. no. So, I was not quick enough to get the first picture. But I don't even see anybody standing at the door. Do you see anybody standing at the door besides Mr. Downs? No, I see the screen door. You just see a screen door, is that right? Is this the only picture that you're testifying to that shows Mr. Downs collecting any money at all? Yes. yes. Does this picture show Mr. Downs collecting money? Not at that moment, no. No. Okay. You don't have a picture of him collecting money, right? No. No. Do you know of your own knowledge whether Mr. Downs 
collects money for cutting lawns? Um, so. Now, don't assume, ma'am. Do you know, excuse me, do you know of your own <coughs> knowledge that Mr. Downs receives money for cutting somebody else's lawn other than Grace Presbyterian Church? I wouldn't know. You don't know, do I, you? I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. You don't know. I don't right? know how he collects his funds now. Do okay. you know? It's a simple question, yes or no. Do you know whether he collects money for cutting his lawns? Yes or no? Objection. She asked and answered where she did just answer. answer. No, she didn't answer. She said she wouldn't know. I'm asking if she knows. Which is an answer saying she doesn't know. I don't know. think so. I don't think it's a proper answer to the question. <laughs> Ms. Glass, do you know, ma'am? I wouldn't know how he collects his funds. I would not know that question. Why can't she answer a yes or no question? I think it's the answer she's giving. Okay, Mr. Yannick. You're not going to direct her to answer the question? She's answered it. I'm going to ask the board to direct her to answer that question yes or no. And I'm going to object. She answered the question. Mr. Yannick is unhappy with the answer. <coughs> Mr. Yannick, move on. She's answered the question. When you were following Mr. Downs around the neighborhood, did you have a valid driver's license? Objection. Relevant. It's not relevant. Move on, please. Does your husband use a commercial blower on his prop on your property? He does. Okay. And haven't the police been called because of complaints by neighbors of the excessive noise of that blower on on the use of that property? Objection. Relevant. It's a question of noise. I don't see how it's relevant. This <coughs> citation. But I'll withdraw the objection. Answer the question. They weren't called. No neighbors have ever complained, as far as you know. Objection, ask and answer. Correct. Next question, please. No, no, that's not quite right, but I'll move on. reason why you followed Mr. Downs around the neighborhood and took dozens of pictures is your obsession and vendetta <coughs> against Mr. and Mrs. Downs because they complained to the borough about your husband conducting, and you, conducting a business on your property. Isn't that the real reason why you're here tonight, you took a dozen pictures, and you testified here the way you did? I took those pictures, and I I made the complaints because I felt that they were running a business next door. Even though you're running a and business next door. I have no noise. The noise is what drew my attention. I've known they've had a business for many, many years. But you're angry about the fact that they made a complaint to the police about you, isn't that right? Objection, ask and answer. Bias and motivation. Understood, but she just answered it. I don't think she did. You asked it, she answered it. What? And then you asked it again. 
I asked her a direct question as whether she has an obsession or a vendetta. And I, I, I have not yet heard an answer to that question. So limited to that question, Ms. Glass. I just asked it. Could you please answer the limited to that question? Do you have a, if you could read it back. Vendetta or obsession? No, I do not. No. Are you angry about the fact that they testified against you? Testified against me for what? That they made a complaint to the borough and testified against you with respect to, strike that, made a complaint to the borough about you were operating a business out of your property. But you ended up pleading, find, being found guilty of that, right? Uh, boards, some boards in the back of the truck. That's what we were cited for. And your testimony here, it's right there. Does your husband still load masonry material on the back of his truck and bring it to your property? Objection. Relevant. It's not, not relevant whether he still does. Next question. <laughs> Let me just say for the record that I, at the last hearing, I interposed an objection because the notice of violation says current conditions. I, and, and you allow testimony every which way. I'm trying to find out what the current conditions were at the neighborhood. I want to find out whether they're currently operating that, 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 in that fashion. The current we're talking about, Mr. Yanoff? Well, the current, that word is in the notice of violation. We're not talking about current as of tonight. And we're, and Mr. Marlier, we're also talking about current with regard to 301. We're not talking with regard to the neighborhood or any other property within the neighborhood. We're just talking about 301. All of a sudden, we're limiting this to 301. I got it. Okay. Mr. Yanoff, you've allowed a lot of latitude to discuss other property, the other property. I would ask you to ask your next question, please. I have no further questions of this witness. I have no leader. Fair enough. Okay, from the board. Uh, Ms. Keller, do you have any questions? <coughs> no. Not for me, no. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, Mr. Hitchens introduced you as the owner of the property. Are you the owner of the property? We are uh, in the process of purchasing the property. But you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be the owner as of yet? As of yet. Okay. Uh, the number of photos that you were looking at and describing you used the phrase before you were asked to eliminate the phrase, the continued business activity. Could you tell me what that means? The sound generating from the property, the trucks being moved in and out, um, and the manner that it was done in, really. The word business activity is why I'm asking. Sure. I was just thinking. All right, that's your answer. That's your answer. Um, and we saw a number of uh, photographs with the large uh, mower and the large uh, blower and the weed whacker. <coughs> How many lawn mowers were normally seen on the back of Mr. Downs' truck? Uh, the one large one. One. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. I actually do have a question. I'm sorry. Slow thinker. Um, could you just clarify um, what the process appears to be for loading and unloading the mower specifically on and off of the truck? Um, when he starts it, and he's making it look like he's cutting part of the yard, uh, the mower runs between anywhere between five and ten minutes, um, and it is pushed. It needs to be running in order to get it on the truck. Um, it's on the truck, the truck leaves, uh, several hours later it comes home and I can hear the mower <coughs> start again and it will run for five or ten minutes. So because of the size of the mower, it has to be running to be loaded on and off running. using the ramps that you showed in the um, month of Okay, thanks. what that sign was? I do not. 
Okay, thank you. Mr. Hitchens? Uh, only one brief question, just because I don't want to think for I'm misrepresenting anything. Uh, Ms. Glass, uh, are you a current tenant at 303? I am. Do you have a lease? I do. And who's that lease with? Uh, Frank Riley. And who's Frank Riley? I see another property. And according to that lease, does that lease give you the right to occupy and use the pro property? Yes. So I just make a proffer to the, just so that she has a legal interest in that property as the equivalent of an owner. Understood. I have a couple follow-ups. Yes, Mr. Were you present at the last hearing when Mr. Riley testified? I was. Did you hear Mr. Riley testify that you were months in arrears on that? There's a whole story that goes with that. Did you hear him testify to that under oath? Yes. Okay. And tell me how, if you're months in arrears on the rent, you're in the process of buying the property. Objection relevance. She opened the door. Well, she it also goes to credibility. <laughs> But you're months behind the rent. Objection asking yeah, yes. the next question. Do you have any experience operating lawnmower equipment? I'm going to object because it's outside the scope of the question by the board. I limited my questions to the specific question by the board member. <coughs> she I understand, but there was a question about the lawnmower being pushed around and how it's turned on and why. So is there any objection for the rent? Understood. Go ahead, Michelle. Do you have any experience in the operation of landscaping or lawnmower equipment? What kind of experience do you have? I've used uh, hand blower. i never used a backpack blower. Um, weed eaters. I've used lawn mowers. Cutting your own lawn. Mowers, yeah. That's the extent of your experience, cutting your own lawn. Yes. I have no further questions. Okay. That's all the questions for this witness. Do you have another witness, Mr. Hitchens? Uh, it would just be Mr. Downs, but I'm happy to agree, if counsel is willing, that. Uh, Provided that he doesn't object that my question would be outside the scope, I'm happy to do it on cross-examination because I assume Mr. Gannoff will call Mr. Downs as a witness. Essentially, I just don't want to get an objection that it's outside the scope of his direct because I could call the witness on my direct and keep him. I can ask him anything I want. How do I know that until the question yeah, is Why don't you ask him and, and ask the questions that... Well, then I'll just call Mr. Downs. Then I'll just do it that so, way. I'll yeah, call that's one direct as... First, first question, are we finished with this question? Oh, yes, we are. Yes, yes, thank you for your <laughs> testimony tonight. Yeah, Mr. Hitchens, I think maybe it would just be easiest if you call Mr. Downs. I have no problem with that. Uh, so I call Mr. Downs. Mr. Downs, would you stand, please? This morning. Some of the testimony about to give is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes, sir. And your full name, sir? David B. Downs. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Downs, um, uh, first, where's your current name? 301 Barnaby. Um, and uh, who lives there with you? My wife and myself. And how long have you lived at the property? 25 years. Um, You're asking the wrong person. I don't even know what. It's over 25. Fair enough. Don't get paid. <laughs> I don't know. Not trying to. Um, so it would be fair to say you're a lifelong resident of Oh, of course. Um, prior to living here, did you live anywhere else in the in the borough? No. Okay. Well, I mean, I lived on Cedar Street, but I've lived in the borough my whole life. Okay. Um, uh, do you know who Ryan D. Downs is? <laughs> and please understand, I, I have to ask you questions in order to yes, proceed. Yes, I do. Yes. And who is Ryan D. Downs? He's my son. Okay. And do you know where Ryan Downs lives? He lives on McGoldrick Avenue. Okay. Uh, one McGoldrick Avenue? Correct. Okay. Um, now, <coughs> At your time at living at 301 Running Meet, which is about 20 to 25 years, um, have you ever performed or operated uh, landscaping services? Objection. What's the nature of your objections? We're here on the notice of violation for the time period within the notice of violation. Not anything before. In fact, at the last hearing, you refused to allow testimony about pre previous situations. Going back to 2010, I thought that was too far back. So why don't we limit it to... I have a right to ask a question with <coughs> credibility, just like... The there's counselor. no credibility in issue. But certainly he could say whether he was or he wasn't. <coughs> but there's nothing before the board. Yeah, Ms. Mr. Hitches, I don't think he's... It's not being asked to... to in relation to any question that he answered. And, and, and so I, I don't think it's credible. It's going towards... Uh, All right. I'll, I'll ask... So you're sustaining the deduction on access question. Um, do you own... Do you 
own any equipment to cut lawns? Yes. And what equipment is that? I have a, a, I have a blower, a blower, a weed whacker. And that mower, um, if you could describe the mower. It's a Craftsman mower. I bought it 15, almost 12 years ago. It's a big mower. It's a rear wheel drive mower, and I cut my mom's lawn with it. Okay. Why? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 no go ahead. ahead. Um, uh, now, was that the mower that was depicted in the photographs that we showed earlier? I didn't see the pictures. That is entirely fair. So. <clears throat> I'm going to. Go ahead. I'm going to show you what was previously marked as B5. <coughs> first photograph. You can take a look at that, sir. That's it. Okay. And uh, is that the Craftsman mower? Yes. That you bought 12 years ago. Correct. Uh, why <coughs> did you buy that mower 12 years ago? Why? Yeah. <laughs> because my mom lived next door, and my dad passed away. 2000 and I needed to help them with the, the property and so it's they have pretty big properties and it's easier to have that than to, just to push mower. Okay. Um, have you ever used that mower to cut anybody else's grass other than yours or your mom's? Yes. Okay. Whose grass? Uh, the lady next to us. Do we have a time frame with respect to that? Right. Mr. Hitchens, if you can just give us a time frame. That's right. He's already answered the question. So I'm going to answer the question. No, but well, hold on, David, don't argue with me. There is a process. He answered the question he has. I think I have a right. Mr. Downs. I'm done with the picture, right? Understood, but you don't have to throw the, the pictures back. Sir, I, I, please understand. I have a process I okay. have to follow. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Hitchens, ask your question. I, I believe he answered yes. Ask your question. So, whose grass have you cut other than your own or your mom's? Objection. Time frame. When? Mr. Hitchens, why don't you give us a time frame on this? Since you bought it 12 years ago. Objection. Relevance. It goes to credibility. There's no credibility before you. There's no credibility issue. Yeah. Mr. Marlier, what I'm tr attempting to try to do is to determine whether or not he had previously used this to engage in any landscaping services before. I believe, I believe that <clears throat> at one point they had operated a landscaping service up until possibly 2015, at which point that they had ceased operations. I'm just merely trying to get at whether that's true or it's not true. <coughs> right. But I don't think that that's relevant. This proceeding, we're talking about a notice of violation for 2017 to 18. Okay, then I'll ask this question. Yes. Then. Um, have you ever used that that Craftsman mower for landscaping services? Objection. Same objection. Okay. I have a right to. I'm asking for him to describe and qualify what he has used that mower for. I think I have every right to ask him. You that. said well, I I hold on just a second. But I understand <coughs> what you're saying, Mr. Hitchens. But the way you're asking it, it could mean going back to 2000, which. That is entirely correct, Mr. Marlier. I am, I am intentionally asking it that way because I'm trying to determine whether or not he's ever used this equipment for landscaping services, which would certainly be relevant to this board's determination of whether or not this equipment could be used currently. I suspect that their argument is that it cannot be used or it does not. So, so if he, sorry, Mr. Richard, mm -hmm. if he said, I've never used that for landscaping, then you can cross him on, or you can ask a question to, to chip away at that credibility, but he hasn't said that. I know. I asked the question if he has, and the objection came in. I was waiting it's, for the answer. Because because you're bringing it in for credibility, and it's not relevant as to time frame. So I want you to limit your time frame to somewhere around the vicinity of this year or last year. The last, I mean, maybe maybe the last. We brought in testimony from going back to 2016, Mr. Hitchens. We can't go back to 2010. 2000. <coughs> Mr. Downs, were you operating a landscaping business in 2016? Objections beyond the scope of the notice of violation. I'm, I'm going to overrule that objection. Can I answer again? Sure. Uh, were you operating a landscaping business in 2016? No. Whose grass were you cutting in 2016? Why? Objection. What's the nature of the The objection? notice of violation is, says that as of the date of the notice of violation, putting aside the current issue, the current argument, and that's why we're here. We're not here for 2016. I think, I think you're going to have a, a continuing objection. I'm going to allow him some latitude to go back a couple
couple of years, okay, to now to try to prove the notice of violation. I'm not allowing them to go back to 2010 or 2000. I'm allowing them to go back to 2016. So if you want a continuing objection while I ask Please. questions about 2016, 2017, that's fine. <coughs> go ahead, Mr. President. I think I asked, whose law did you cut in 2016? Mine, my mother, and Mrs. Custis. Were you cutting the Grace Lutheran, or Grace Presbyterian Church at that time? No, I wasn't. Off and on, I'm sorry, off and on. Uh, so other than those four places, um, were you cutting anybody else's law? Not that I recall. Um, and did you use any other equipment when you cut that, cut, cut the law? Yes. And what other equipment did you have? We whacked her in a blower. Okay. And uh, there were photographs shown of the blower. I'm going to point to you to B3. This is This is seven pages from the end. Um, Mr. Downs. Uh, would you agree that this picture shows a blower and a weed whacker next to it? Correct. Is that the blower and the weed whacker that you use? Uh, I can't tell you that. Okay. Um, why, why can't you tell me that? Because I, I don't know where that property is. That's not my property. I, I, I'm talking about running the three houses on running me that stuff. Okay. I'm, about. I'm going to flip to the picture before that. Um, and this was a picture that was identified by Ms. Glass. Um, do you see in the let's say, middle of the page on the left side, your left side, uh, in front of the garage, is the same red backpack and uh, the weed whacker next to it? It, it is a red wet weed whacker or, or backpack or whatever it's called. It's not the same. Object to the designation of it as the same. Uh, and I would represent that the witness <coughs> who took the photograph identified that this is the exact same photo from the prior one. Therefore, I think I have a right to refer to it as the same. That's fine. Ask the question. So, do you see that? Yes, sir? I do. Okay. And is there anybody in the photograph with it? Yes, it is. Okay. Do you know who that person is? It looks like Ryan. Okay. Um, so, does that help you to identify whether or not that's the same blower and weed whacker that it belongs to you or does not belong to you? Yeah, it looks like it could be. Okay. Um, and as a part of, would you agree with me, sir, that when you cut other people's lawns, use the blower and weed whacker, you're providing them a service, correct? No. You wouldn't agree that that's providing a service. I don't get paid for it. Okay. So, assuming that putting aside the payment, are you still providing those individuals a service? I guess you could call it that, okay. or helping them out. Now, you don't. Do you get paid by your mom no. for cutting your grass? No. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> um, do you get paid by your neighbor on? I'm sorry. What was the other? Property? Her name is Mrs. Custis. Ms. Two, Ms. Two nineteen. 219. Does Mrs. Custis pay you to cut her lawn? No, she doesn't. Okay. And um, you cut the lawn of Grace Presbyterian Church, correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, do you get paid to cut that lawn? No. Do you get... So why do you cut the lawn for the, the church? Because I work there. Okay. That's well, part of my salary. Oh, I don't get any extra. Okay. Does the church have its own lawn, lawn equipment? Um, yes, they do. And what lawn equipment do they have? A, a mower, a blower, and a weed whacker. Okay. And um, do you use their equipment when you cut Grace Pres Presbyterian Church, or do you use your equipment? I use uh, their equipment. Okay. <clears throat> uh, you may recall there were photographs uh, identifying or showing uh, represented that they were your <coughs> truck in front of Grace Park Presbyterian Church. Do you remember that, sir? Yes. And did you have a chance to see those photographs? Yes. Okay. Um, and did those photographs show your mowing equipment in the back of the truck? Yes. Um, if you could, please explain 
why was your mowing equipment in the back of your truck when you were in front of the church? The reason why, because I went, I, I went home for lunch, I, I load the mower in the back of my truck, take it to Grace Church at 4 o'clock when I get done, I go cut my cousin's lawn in Willow Grove because he was in a coma over the summer for two months. After that, I went home and unloaded the truck. So that was probably July through August, or July through October, September, that I would load up at least once a week my, my stuff, take the grace, go to work. As soon as I got done, I bolted up to Willow Grove, so I went up to deal with traffic, then I brought it home. Okay. And um, would it be fair to say your cousin doesn't pay you to cut his grass either? Correct. Okay. Um, but you're providing a service to your cousin because presumably he can't do it, correct? If you want to say it's a service, I think just he don't be a nice guy. I would say that would be more than that. Fair enough. Right? Um, now, uh, so you started cutting your cousin's lawn in 2017, correct? Uh, yes. Uh, did you start cutting anybody else's lawn other than the individuals you already mentioned in 2017? No. So again, that would just be your mother next door <coughs> in 2017. Your mother next door, um, Mrs. Cus Custis. Custis. Your cousin, Grace Presbyterian Church, and your own lawn. Grace Presbyterian Church, I cut off and on in 2017. Okay. But I just started that this year full-time. Okay. But other than those properties, nobody else? Correct. Um, I believe there, there was a picture uh, Ms. Glass had provided to the municipality of uh, what she represented was a property also located on Running Meat Avenue. Uh, I believe she referred to it as three houses down. Do you recall that testimony? That's Mrs. Custis. Okay. So that's confirmed that. It's 219 Running Meat. Okay, so that's what she's talking about. Thank you. Then there was a photograph that was identified of a red brick house. Do you recall that? Oh, you mean up the street? Yeah, yeah, I got I know who it is, yep. Okay, uh, whose property is that? Elaine Ferreira. Okay, do you cut Elaine Ferreira's yard? No. Okay, who cuts Elaine Ferreira's yard? My son, Ryan. Okay, and ha whose equipment does he use to cut the lawn? He cuts his hours. Okay. Do you know if Ryan cuts anybody else's lawn other than Elaine Ferrara? I don't know. Okay. Um, when your son has to go and cut Elaine Ferrara's yard, um, does he come to your house to get the equipment? Uh, I think it's in his in her, her garage. In Elaine Ferrara's garage? I think it's in her garage. So you keep your lawn mowing equipment in Elaine Ferrara's garage? I have it, so I have a push mower that goes to Elena Ferreira's garage, correct? Okay, so then, to be clear, we had referred previously to a craftsman mower that you would identify from one of the photographs. Um, and I'm not going to, because I don't want to be argumentative, you, mm -hmm. that that was in the photograph. Is the push mower that you're talking about that's in Elena Ferreira's house, is that the same craftsman that you... No. So it's a different mower? Correct. And did that belong to you? Yes. So you own two mowers? Correct. Okay. Now, your counsel had asked Mr. Locke and had asked Ms. Glass about the relationship that you and your family, or that you have with the Glasses. Do you recall that? Yes. Um, how would you describe your relationship with the Glasses? No relationship at all. Um, when you say no relationship at all, and I hate to probe this, but is that a, you just don't talk, or it's a good thing, or a bad thing, or you? You just don't talk. Uh, I believe your attorney had used with Mr. Locke the, the term animosity. Do you recall that? Yes. Um, would you agree that there is animosity between you and the glasses? Mm. I, I, I wouldn't think so. Just we haven't talked. Could be animosity. That's what you're saying. Okay. Now, had you ever made complaints against the glasses with regard to the to their property. Objection relevance. I was foreclosed from that. <coughs> I, I, I think I have a right to probe, just as the, Mr. Yanoff had probed with the, Ms. Glass as to the relationship and to their prior history with each other. I, I think we admitted that as well. So, go ahead. You can ask your question. 
So had you previously filed any complaints against the glasses? Yes. Okay, and what was the nature of those complaints? Running a commercial concrete business out of his house. Um, and if you could, very briefly, describe to the board what type of complaints you made to the borough with this, this matter. Uh, trust pulling in, unloading, scaffolding, the backyard full of materials, commercial equipment, a saw. Okay. People coming to work. And, and in fairness, I asked an inartful question there. I was asking more, how did you make those complaints to the borough? Did you make them in person? Did you make them in writing? What did you provide to the borough? Pictures. You provided them pictures. And videos. And videos. Correct. Um, any written complaints? Um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sure about written complaints. Okay. Do you recall whether or not you showed up to any council meetings to complain about this business operation? Me in particular? Yes. I've been at the meetings, but I was there. I don't, I don't know if I made complaints or not. My wife did most of those. Okay. <laughs> I, try to keep, I try to keep out of all that. She handles all the videos, letters. She writes the checks. She does it all. I got to figure that's what she is. And you love her a lot, don't you? 33 years. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, first, um, what about the business operations was concerning to you at the 301, I'm sorry, 303 property? I'll, I'll rephrase it. What impact was the operations occurring at, that you've described at 303 having a, for you at 301? What did he say? What, what are you trying to say? Yeah, so you described the business activities that you had complained about were 303. at 303 okay. were scaffolding, saw, uh, unloading and loading. If you Lewis. could. Okay, so that's what I'm trying to get. If you could explain to me what impact that was having on you at 301. Oh, with 6 o'clock in the morning, I'm loading this truck up to go to work, coming home different times of the day, screaming and hollering at us all the time. That's, a, that's enough. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to show you what I'm going to mark as Mark as B, thank you. I'm going to show you what I'm going to mark as B18. Show up council and I'll have one more up after the witness this time. And while the witness is looking at this, I'm going to represent the council that this is a a uh, copy of the meeting minutes from November 28, 2016, uh, the Jenkintown Borough Council. And to help direct everyone's attention to move this faster, I would ask that the witness please look at page two, six paragraphs down, starting with the words day down. So, Mr. Downs, if you could just take a moment to read that. Can I ask for an offer of proof as to how far we're going to go with this? How far we're to go in reading it, or how far we're to go with this line of question? With this line of question. I, I asked the witness if he had made any verbal complaints. He said he didn't recall. I'm merely trying to show that there were verbal complaints. Should be relatively quick. Um, so, uh, first, um, Mr. Downs, uh, does this refresh your recollection of whether or not you went to the November 28th meeting to make public comments uh, with regards to the 303 property? It was there. I did. Okay. And, and looking at what's contained in there, uh, uh, do you have any reason to disagree that those are the comments or a summary of the comments that you made? I would say so. Okay. Uh, so with that, I don't need to ask any further questions. It's a document that speaks for itself. Yes. Now, in that um, in that description, you make reference to an email sent over the holiday weekend. Do you, do you recall reading that? And I apologize. You can't do it.
I see that. Okay. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to mark as B19. But I see that, but it probably wasn't my email. Let him ask a question. That's fine. That's fine. And I suspect you're entirely correct, Mr. Kelly. So I'm going to show you what I've marked as B19, sir. Um, uh, sir, would you agree with me that this appears to be a printout of an email from Ryan Downs to Peggy Downs, Ryan Downs, Dave, and then a series of the council members and the, well, the firm. Yes. Okay. Um, and have you, you saw this email before today, correct? Uh, I can't. I, would, I, don't, I don't know. Well, would you? I don't really do emails too much, so I don't know if I saw this or not. Okay. So much paperwork, I, I would I would not say no. I know the I know the what's going on there, but I don't know if I saw the email. Okay. Well, first, would you agree with me, sir, that the third person listed is you on the email? Correct. Is that your email address? I don't want to read it for the record because I don't want people to have your private information. Okay, I see it. Would you agree with me that that's your email address? Yes, it is. And again, in looking at the meeting minutes for from B eighteen, is that the email you were referring to that was sent over the holiday weekend? Was that what you say? Was that the email that was sent over the holiday weekend? Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Yes. Mr. Downs, you had referred earlier to about not receiving payment for the lawn mowing that you do for other individuals or for your work, correct? Do you recall? Yes. Um, is there anything in the borough code or under the law that makes that, dis why you point that distinction out? Objection. Calls for a legal conclusion. I'm asking An interpretation of the code. I'm asking if he's aware of some sort of legal issue as to why he keeps pointing out the payment issue, whether he gets paid or he doesn't. It's asking him to draw why, why, why don't you ask why it's important to him? Okay. Why is whether you get paid or not get paid important? I don't know. I'm just telling you I don't. Okay. <laughs> you have an opportunity before today to review the zoning code and the criteria for no impact businesses? No, I did. Um, if I asked you to tell me what a no impact business is, would you be able to tell me? No, I did. So if I ask you a question that, you know, if your landscaping business was determined to be a no impact business, could you meet the criteria? Objection. You would have now. You want to ask the question. I have no idea. You would have no idea. Your council had identified two letters that they marked as applicant one and two. Do you recall that? You show me a moment. See if I remember. Sure. Yes. One, two. I see your letters. Uh, would you agree with me? Well, first, did you direct your attorney to, to, to draft those letters? My wife and I did. Okay. Um, and uh, mainly my wife. 
Fair she enough. runs everything. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, in those letters, sir, do you acknowledge that you are currently operating a business of any type? Objection. Documents speak for themselves. Withdraw. Uh, Mr. Downs, sitting here today, do you believe that you are operating a business of any type in your property? Not at all. And why do you believe you're not operating a business? We don't. <laughs> why would I think I'm running a business? You tell me why I'm running a business. I'm not. I, you know, if you look at this, I have no idea. I don't run a business. I cut a couple ladies' lawns, and that's it. And the lawns you cut, you don't get paid. Correct. If I told you that there was a definition of business that did not require payment, would that change your mind? Objection. I'll allow. Well, first of all, he needs to identify what it is he's talking about. He's giving him a hypothetical like we've done a lot in the last two weeks. I'm asking him to identify the code section that he's suggesting says what he says it says. I, I, I don't I'll, think allow I, the, I'll allow the question. Go ahead, Mr. Richards. Answer it again. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. If, I, if I told you a code section exists that defined business and did not mention whether you had to get paid or you didn't have to get paid, would that change your mind about whether you were operating a business? No. If I told you there's a code section that allows for something called a no-impact business, which is a business that has no impact on your neighbors, would that change your opinion as to whether or not you're offering your business? No. I no other questions. Please, but yeah. Back. Well, procedurally, okay. are, are you obliging me to question him at this point, or do I can put away to my case and shoot? That's a really good question. Oh. Uh, Every once in a while, even the blind squirrel finds me. That's a really good question. Uh, we're, we're at 9.30 here, and uh, this case is going to go on. You have several witnesses to put on. Yes, we do. And you would not finish within a half hour. No. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Yanoff, you're saying that, to answer your question, you're going to call Mr. Downs? Yes, I am. So, okay, I think you can question him at that time. Thank you. Okay, uh, this case... Uh, Thank you for your patience and thank you for all your cooperation and uh, courtesy with all the witnesses. I'm sorry. I have to admit documents and evidence. reason I say that? Yes. This is, okay, that's great. So, just about to end it prematurely, as, uh, as I made the mistake uh, the, the last hearing, we'll allow the board to ask uh, questions of Mr. Downs pursuant to the testimony that he just gave. Are there any questions of the board, Mr. McCabe? Uh, Mr. Downs, do you, does this business that you say you don't run, do you have any employees? No. You receive <laughs> received no money from any of these uh, homes that you? Correct. And you've relayed this information to the borough before it got to this point? Correct. I just, oh, I just have a question. When you, were you at the meeting with George Locke when he uh, said that he had that meeting? He was hoping to get it settled among the people. Were you? Do you understand? Remember My wife and I were. Right. Correct. Did you understand that if you had sent a letter saying that meeting his requirements that you were not running a business <coughs> at this time that that would have settled it? No, we got. We thought we'd go to the meeting and he would, he would talk to us about the, that, what's going on and try to resolve the issue, but instead he gave us the citation right on the spot and we were told if we needed to do anything else, we had to go to the zoning hearing board. He didn't, you did not understand that you could settle this by writing a letter to him? Not that I remember. Do you have any I, I think that... He's answered it. Thank you. Do you have a business license, Pennsylvania business license for landscaping in 2017? No. I have no further questions. Before we go on, yes. um, can we talk outside for just a moment? <coughs> just going off the record. <coughs> Thank you.
call this back into uh, order. And I believe the uh, lawyer. So we, we just took a, a thank you, Mr. Watson. Uh, we just took a, a brief recess to the uh, so that the attorneys and I can talk about some procedural matters. Mr. Hitchens, do you have any more uh, witnesses? I have no further witnesses. Um, are there any uh, documents that you would like, that you've marked, that you'd like to move into evidence? Uh, yes. Um, Mr. Warlier, I'd like to move into the record for, I should say, mission into the record, uh, documents B1 through B18, um, which is everything from the parcel record all the way through to the November 28, 2016 public meeting minutes. Um, please note that that excludes document B19. Um, in conference with counsel, uh, I'm going to I'm going to hold back on admitting this because uh, I believe Mr. Ryan Downs would be a witness, so I'll get him to authenticate that before the admission. And Mr. Uh, Yanoff, you're not going to object when he goes to admit it um, during your case. Correct? That's correct. Okay. So that's B1 through B18, and just so the record is very, very clear, there was a B14 initially marked at the last hearing. I sustained the objection to that um, document from uh, witness Frank Riley, and it was a correspondence um, dated October 16, 2017, with some other documents attached. So that was never actually marked. I, s I sustained the objection, and so we moved on during this hearing uh, with documents being marked as B14 moving forward. And, and Mr. Marler, if it helps, B14 should be marked as the December 11, 2017 public meeting. Just so the records, that's what we have. Yeah, that's what I have. Yep. And so with that, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I believe that the borough has closed its case, correct? That is correct. Okay. And, and the council and the Downses and the board have all agreed that uh, this will be continued to July 12th, 2018 um, for a third hearing. Um, 7 o'clock here at the borough, that no needed notice is needed as uh, this has already been, notice has already been um, provided pursuant to the NPC. Anything else you want to add, gentlemen? No, thank you. So that we thank you all for your cooperation. Thank you for the hearing board. Thank you. Uh, we'll be convening on 7 o'clock, July 12th.